What's going on, guys? It's April 14th. We have we are covering three games here. Two very talented teams are down three to nothing, and another talented team brings a game to two to one series wise. Uh, before I get into everything, first of all, I want to say thank you for watching. Uh, we are almost up to 660, I think 670 subscribers. Now, I've got to talk to the rest of the guys, and I really got to think about it, but I might be trying to get something together where we want to get to 1,000 subscribers, and if we can get to that, we're going to have a $100 gift card giveaway f when we get past 1,000. All right, if we can get it like before the summer's over, it might be a little bit more. But my goal and our channel's goal is to get us to a thousand subscribers before 2020. We'll work on it. We'll send out an announcement. Hopefully, we can get there quick so we can get it done quick and you guys can be $100 richer. One of you guys. We'll see what happens there. But this is Sunday, April 14th. Uh, we are going to look at three games here. Recap three games in the uh, NHL playoffs. Two in the Eastern Conference, one in the Western Conference. Unfortunately, I do have work for a living, so uh, I have to really work for a living. I'm not that good yet on YouTube. Um, I'm not watching the Golden Knights for San Jose Sharks. I am glancing at it, but I'm not going to wait that long to cover it. As much as I love, you know, talking to you guys, doing this stuff for you, sometimes you just got to be like, you need some sleep. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, this the, today was a crazy, crazy day for two teams here. Um, we had the we had the Islanders against the Penguins. We had the Columbus Blue Jackets versus the Lightning, and we have the Winnipeg Jets versus the Blues. Um, you guys all know I'm a Penguins fan, and I am also someone who is not deluded or delusional. I know the Penguins are going to lose this series, and you know what? They deserve it, and that's the first game we're going to cover here. The Islanders win 4-1. to one. They are the better team. The goaltending's better. The power play's better. The defense is better. The one thing the Islanders did, and Barry Trotz did, was they took away the center of the ice, and that is the Penguins' strength. Their centermen, you know, Crosby, Malkin, Cullen, guys like that, they have taken away that center ice, and that's why I think the Penguins, in my opinion, have struggled. In this game, the Penguins scored first. They scored first, and in my head, I'm like, all right, at home, let's even this shit up. Let's get it tonight, get it Monday. We'll be 2-2, two two, three-game series. Nope, because the Islanders came back with four unanswered goals, and they have more intensity, more physicality, and it seems like they're trying harder than the Penguins right now. It, it just shows that talent doesn't win series. Teams win series. And right now, the Islanders are the better team, and they deserve to win this series. Rob, you know, Leonard there, I honestly thought he wouldn't be able to hold it together because I've seen him get so angry sometimes when he gets scored on. But the Penguins haven't scored on him, so why the hell would he get mad? I mean, honestly, it's just since the first game where the Islanders should have won in regulation anyway, Leonard has been playing lights out for the Islanders. And you know what? Eberly, Barzell, Lee playing phenomenal. Philpola, unsung hero for the Islanders. It's just the Islanders want it more. They want it more. And it's sad to say it because, of course, I'm a huge Penguins fan. But honestly, the Islanders want it more. And, uh, I mean, it's an understatement that Sidney Crosby is having probably the worst series ever in his career. He, in three games, he has zero goals, zero assists. He's a negative four plus minus, And he's only taken six shots. Six in three games. You know, really good players have six in, in one game. He only has six and three. I, I think that's a big story going into the offseason. Obviously, no, we're not going to release Chris Sidney Crosby or anything, but what the hell happened? Why all of a sudden did he fall apart? During the regular season, he usually fires up during this time, you know, last couple months of the season, and that's when he starts knocking down the points and he starts climbing the thing. I mean, he had 100 points this year. He has nothing right now. 
Malkin is their best player right now, and that's brutal. Because Malkin's a great player, but Crosby needs to be good too for the team to do well. And Crosby is not doing well. That whole line isn't doing well. Getzel's not doing well. Russ isn't doing well. You know, the only ones, in my opinion, that are playing well is Hornquist, Kessel, and Malkin. But they can't do it by themselves, folks. We all know that. And it's just very, very sad. And I'm going to be honest with you, too. Matt Murray, ever since they won their second Stanley Cup in the playoffs, he has been very bad. This year, right now, he has an 8.96 save percentage with a 3.44 goals against average. Now, I know his team isn't really helping him out, but goddamn, Matt Murray... You're playing a lot better when you had Flurry on your ass. It seems like Mark Andre Flurry leaving the Penguins was one of the biggest things to change the team because there was no competition at goalie. Matt Murray's better than D. Smith. He's better than Tristan Jari. There was when Flurry was there, there was honest competition. There was. It's just there was honest competition there. And they both played the same. So I think that's a big thing. I think the Islanders want it more. I think that our stars aren't playing well besides Malkin and Kessel. And you know what? Matt Murray's not playing to the ability that he did his first two years. But those first two years, he had Marc-Andre Fleury on his ass. So, you know, maybe a little bit of competition. Bring in somebody that has almost the same ability to Murray next year. And, you know... I don't know. We're, we'll talk about the Penguins after the season's over if they get eliminated in this series because I think maybe moving on from Kessel and Malkin and trying to get Marner would be the big thing to do, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I, this is the second game we're covering here. The The Lightning are down 3 to nothing to the Blue Jackets. 3 to, no, to the Blue Jackets! I was showing my fiancé that the Lightning had 21 points more than the next closest team to them in the regular season. Obviously, you don't win the Stanley Cup in the regular season, but to get 128 points and you're down 3 to nothing to the a bad team, stats-wise, it just shows how well Tortorella's system really is. It really does. That 1-2-2 two, two is phenomenal against skilled teams. It really is. and it's, Columbus is always a tough out ever since Tortorella's become the coach. Um, you know, once again, just like the Islanders, Columbus wants it more, in my opinion. Sergei Bobrovsky is playing better than he usually does in the playoffs, and that's a big thing. If he played as well as he did the couple years before, as he is right now, the Columbus Blue Jackets would have made it a lot farther than they had the last couple of years in the playoffs. You know, the, the Lightning need to have some intensity in Game 4, or else it might be a sweep. On Monday night, you might have the Penguins and the Lightning Swept out of the playoffs. That's crazy. Crazy to think. And it's true. It might actually happen. Um, you know, Hedman and Kucherov weren't playing. Okay. But Steven Stamkos. Steven Stamkos has a negative two rating. He has two penalty minutes and he didn't take a shot in the game. How are you one of the best players on the ice and you didn't take a shot in the game? To me, that is just absolutely insane. If you're that type of player, dude, that marquee player, you've got to rip the puck. Granted, Tortorella's, uh, you know, system and everything is good for it. Doesn't matter. Great players are great players for a reason, and you should at least take a shot. I mean, uh, what I was just talking about before, Sidney Crosby only having six shots, but he still had a shot every game. Stamkos not having a shot when he knew that Kucherov wasn't there, not very good. Not very good at all. And you know what? On the Columbus side, they're playing with intensity. They're playing great. And Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne has come out of his shell, and he is playing fantastic for the Blue Jackets. I think in the last two games, he's got six points. I think two goals and four assists, which is just uh, very, very good. For some of the stories that came out about Matt Duchesne, and his attitude and stuff like that, I'm glad that he's got a chance to show that, hey, I can score, too. I can help a team win. And that's what he's doing with, if it happens, one of the biggest upsets ever in hockey. Um, and you know what? Columbus just looks like the better team. So I hope Tortorella it's a fun, fire under their ass because this isn't last year. You didn't beat the Capitals after you won the first two in Washington. You won one in Columbus. Get this shit over with and let's move on to the second round. 
because I just don't think you should give the Lightning any sort of hope. I mean, I don't think the Columbus Blue Jackets are going to lose, uh, you know, all four games. It could happen, but I doubt it. And you know what? It's going to be crazy to see that maybe the Penguins and the Lightning both get swept in the first round of the Stanley Cup Finals. And they're always favorites to win. It, unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. All right, next, we got the Blues versus the Jets. A fun series here, but the Jets win 6-3. to three. Jets outshot the Blues only by one shot, but they, said they still did outshoot them. Uh, Patrick Laine playing good. Dustin Bufflin, what a... I mean, that goal off the guy's mask, that, I don't know if that was smarts or just luck, but still, it looked really, really cool. Uh, you know, Winnipeg in this game had the answer for every single one of the Blues' goal. When it was 5-1, to when it was five to one, and, no, no, I'm sorry, when it was 5-3, to three, no, I'm, I'm losing my concentration here. When Steen scored, within... I think a minute, Winnipeg answered, and that happened throughout the whole game. And that Steen goal was at the end of the game, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, every single one of Winnipeg's shots looked great when they got scored on. Uh, you know, it's even Bufflin's weird one, but still, what a move. What a, what a defensive power as well as an offensive power. He is a big boy, and he plays very, very well. Uh, he could be a forward. He's been a forward before. He's a good defenseman. He has turned in to the Winnipeg defensive leader. And it's just good to see the, that team gel and actually get a win in this series. Because I like Winnipeg. I like the way they play. I like the players. Shifley is a... I'm a huge fan of Shifley. Um, you know, Bennington didn't play great for the Blues. That doesn't matter. You dust that one off and just keep on going. Hellepuck didn't have a great game either. I mean, he just let in less goals. Letting in three goals in a power play... in, our, in a penalty... I am losing my mind in a playoff game is a lot. It really is. I mean, it, it is a lot. Three goals, th three an average of three goals a game. Letting in as a goaltender, that's a lot in the playoffs. So Hellebuck didn't have the greatest game, but he had the winning game. Bennington, like I said, don't worry about it, kid. All those shots were great. The one off the mask was a fluke. And you know what? It's just something you not need to worry about. What Bennington needs to do is play lights out in game four and try to get one at home to force Winnipeg to win the next three games. Two at home and one away, but still going to be very, very tough. And you want to know what, guys? Think about this. The Lightning, the Penguins, and the Winnipeg Jets are in bad spots right now. And that sucks because they all have really, really talented players. But so does Columbus, so do the Islanders, so do the Blues. It just, from a, a fan standpoint of hockey, it's going to be tough to lose those teams to watch. But you know what? Right now, the Island, I'm sorry, the Penguins and the Lightning don't deserve a win. The Jets did respond well after losing in overtime last game. So we'll see what happens. But Lightning and Penguins fans, you know, good God. I, I, I mean, I know how I felt. I can only imagine how Lightning fans are feeling right now after having a 128-point regular season, 62 or 64 wins. That's pretty rough. To be down 3 nothing to a team that really doesn't have a lot of firepower besides, uh, you know, Duchesne and Panarin. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. Might be a late night for me. I got some, you know, real life stuff to do. But do me a favor. While you're watching this video, subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit that bell notification button. And hey, enjoy the hockey. We appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.